Okay, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how I have made a commercial looking device using a very nice enclosure, a few little add-ons, the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry MC media streaming software. The intention of this is to give others an idea or a starting point as to what can be done to make a device that looks like something you would buy in the shop, which tends to keep the family happy. What we're going to do is start with uh, a Virgin Media cable modem. Now as you can see there is practically no logos on this. There is a logo on the top but it's almost impossible to see especially when you're looking at the device from the front. The front panel is plain plastic with no markings, no holes on it. Along both sides there are lots of ventilation holes and there are also ventilation holes on the bottom. On the back there is the uh, power connection, ethernet connection, a reset button and a hole for the cable connection itself. We're obviously going to be taking the internals out of this so uh, we're going to be keeping the power connection and the ethernet connection because we need those. Getting rid of the reset button and the cable connection because obviously those are no good to us. When you open the modem up you'll see that inside is just one circuit board which isn't even held in place by screws it's simply clamped between the top and bottom parts of the case and on that you can clearly see the Ethernet and power connections separated from pretty much everything else on the board. What we're actually going to do is take a Dremel and cut along the circuit board just behind the Ethernet socket to the edge and down the side of the Ethernet socket uh, to leave just the Ethernet socket and the power connector. Now the case itself is made up of actually three parts. The bottom layer that we've already taken off, uh, the top layer which is the bit with the logo on and there's a centerpiece which is the back panel, front panel, side panels but also includes a rather thick piece of plastic uh, between itself and the top panel but basically that needs to be cut out to give us more room inside the case for the pie to fit in, like so. We've also cut off the tubes that lead up to where the LED holes are in the top of the case um, just so we've got more room to get at the front panel. Once the top and middle sections are snapped back together you can see that there's actually about half a centimetre of space has been freed up just by removing this uh, extra bit of plastic. Now I've bought a HDMI coupler uh, which is uh, one of these flexible joints that goes from uh, male to female. And that's going to plug into the Pi HDMI port and then the female section is going to just stick a little bit proud of the back of the case uh, so that the uh, HDMI cable can be plugged straight into that. To use this however we're going to have to split it apart to take off the casing so that we can leave just the flexible wires inside to give us more flexibility inside the case. We're also going to take a very short USB uh, extension cable and lead that through to the back of the case so that we can plug in an external hard drive, flash drive or whatever. Then we're also going to use another very short USB male to female cable. I found that Raspberry MC works better running from a USB flash drive uh, and simply booting from the SD card. Uh, so we're going to have that mounted inside the case, but for it all to fit in we need to have it on an extension cable. Now what we're going to have to do is take an Ethernet cable, cut the shielding off, strip the wires and solder them to the Ethernet connector that's on the little bit of circuit board we've recovered from the original cable modem. I've done the same with the with some cables to the power connector and I'm running those to a reset switch which is a push to break switch so that when you press the button it breaks the power contact and effectively cuts power to the Pi. Release the button and the Pi has power restored and will boot back up. We're going to be using a IR sensor connected to the GPIO pins so we'll need to drill a small hole in the front of the case to uh, be able to mount the IR sensor behind so that it can see the signals but not to look too ugly on the front of the case. I'm also going to drill another hole for an LED which will switch on and off when the Pi is allegedly switched on and off by remote control. In actual fact the Pi can't be switched off and then switched back on by remote control so I'm simply going to emulate this by activating the screensaver or disabling the HDMI output. As far as connecting to the Pi itself, uh, we're going to be connecting to the GPIO pins. 
But to do this and make it nice and neat and easier to handle, we're going to connect using uh, the header from a USB backplane. But what we're actually going to do is split this. It's currently normally a 9-pin connector. We're going to split it so that there's a single 2-pin connector and another 5-pin connector. As far as wiring it all up goes, we're going to be using the 2 pins to connect to uh, pins 11 and 12, which are GPIO pins 17 and 18. This will be used for pin 18 being the IR receiver, and in my case pin 17 for the LED. At the other end, the 5 block connector will be used for earth, 5 volts and 3 volts. So we're going to strip apart the cables and put them back into position in the appropriate places. A little wiring diagram on screen which shows how everything works. Once you've prepped all that cabling, uh, it's just a case now of mounting the Pi inside the enclosure. For this, I've got the Model B Pi which has the mounting holes, so I've used um, some hex plastic standoffs from Maplin, but you could just as easily hold it in place using the cables that are going to be plugged into all sides of it. There's not a huge amount of room in this case, um, but uh, it's, it, so that will hold it in place sufficiently. And once everything's in place, it's just a case of put the bottom panel back on, do up the screws, and plug it all in. Now, I used a wired connection, and I, I have a cable, Ethernet cable to the, the back of my TV, so that's not a problem. If you want to use wireless, I'd recommend plugging a USB dongle into the socket that we've mounted onto the back of the device. As far as outside the device, actually powering it, what I've decided to use is a power supply that came with a Belkin 7-port hub. This provides 3.8 amps of power so it's plenty enough for the Pi and any devices that I've got plugged into it. But because that didn't have the same type of connector on the end of it that goes into the power socket on the cable modem, I'm taking the cable from that power supply and putting it on the end of the one from the hub. So that should be about it. You should end up with a nice looking commercial style device that will keep the family happy, do the job that you want it to do, and look good under your TV.